What's up, everybody? Chester ARP Church All Devotional Podcast. Glenn Davis, your host. Thanks for being with us. John 10, verses 9 and follow. We'll be back. Gives me grace for every trial. Feeds me with the living bread. All right. Well, thank you so much for being with us today as we jump in. John chapter 10. John chapter 10. I was under the weather yesterday, getting a little late start today. Been sick, but uh, I know you guys are gracious and forgive me for that. We're actually going to pick this up. I said John 9 earlier. I'm going to pick this up in John chapter, excuse me, I said John 10, verse 9 earlier. I'm going to say John 10, verse 7, and go from there. So again, Jesus says to them, to the Pharisees, Truly, truly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. He is the he who is a hired hand and not a shepherd, who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees, and the wolf snatches them and scatters them. He flees because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me. Just as the Father knows me and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. And I have other sheep that are not of this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason the Father loves me, because I lay down my life that I may take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have the authority to lay it down, and I have the authority to take it up again. This charge I have received from my Father. Now I'm going to say at the outset that this is a two-week or a two-day reading. Uh, there's so much in this passage, in these verses 7 through 18, these 11 verses, there's just so much in it. And and so I don't have time to cover it all today, and so we'll come back to it tomorrow. But let me just say this. First of all, truly, truly, I say to you, Jesus says at the beginning, I am the door of the sheep. All who came before me were thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the door. If you enter by me, you'll be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. In the ancient days, there was this kind of a three-sided pen for sheep, and they, in a lot of places that they had this fold, maybe it's three-sided walls or whatever, but they didn't have a, a gate. Maybe they didn't have access to a gate or whatever. And so oftentimes the shepherd himself would sleep in the, the gap to keep the sheep from going in and out. And literally the shepherds would become the door for their sheep. They'd put the sheep in the pen, uh, in the fold for the night, and then the the shepherd would, would lay in the door where they didn't have a gate, if they didn't have a gate, to shut, to keep the sheep in it at night, to keep them safe. And so what Jesus is saying here is very uh, a very dynamic and a, and a very um, important image. What he's saying here is that he is literally the one who li- allows sheep into the, to the fold, and he is the one who protects the sheep when they're in the fold. And he is the one who then takes ownership of those sheep when they're in that fold and under his care, and he leads them out and leaves them in. But they all go as a result of his will. And so that's what the shepherd did. That's how the shepherd cared for his sheep. He said, all those who came before me, they were liars, they were cheats, they were robbers, they were stealers. The sheep did not listen to them. My people did not listen to them. My people stayed faithful to me. And now the door is here if you enter through Jesus. It, it's, a, it's another way of saying what he says in John chapter 14, we'll get to later, I am the way, the truth, and the life. The the only way that we have access to the fold of God, only way we have access to the people of God, only way we have access to life and relationship with God in eternity is through Jesus Christ. He is the door through whom we must enter or through which we must enter into the fold. Jesus knows his own sheep. He calls them by name, but he protects them and and preserves them and feeds them and, and ministers to them. But he is the one who allows them to come in and out. He is the door of his sheep. He says in verse 10, The the thief comes to seek and steal, kill and destroy. Rather, I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. God's purpose for you, his purpose for me, is that we live an abundant life. A life in relationship with him. A life of fulfillment. A life of, uh, of joy. A life in 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 the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, you were created for more than this world has to offer. And Jesus has come to enable you to live that and to attain that through faith in him. And so 
we find purpose, we find value, we find meaning, we find hope, we find joy in the Lord and doing all that we do through him by faith in him. He says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. The good shepherd will willingly lay down his life in the in the doorway to protect his sheep, but also willingly lay down his life to fight off the enemies of the sheep and to keep those who would come to destroy the sheep at bay. And so he says, I lay down my life. Now, it's interesting later on, and we'll cover this more tomorrow, he says, I, I lay down my life on my own accord. No one takes it from me. A, a shepherd engages the enemy. The shepherd engages the threat willingly. And if the threat were to take his life, then that would be a, a willing sacrifice of himself to protect the sheep. And, of course, Jesus did that through his cross. And so he steps into our lives, and he steps into the harm's way, and he took death upon himself for you and for me. He willingly did that. It wasn't taken from him. It may look like the Romans took him and, and crucified him. The Jews turned him over unjustly, unfairly. But but none of that was indicative, uh, excuse me, but none of that was done outside of his own will and his own willingness to give himself for us. That's a demonstration of the shepherd's love for his sheep. He says, the Father loves me because I'm willing to do that. An eternal relationship between the Father and the Son within the persons of the Trinity and the Son willingly took upon himself the responsibility of coming and being incarnate and taking and saving his people through his own death. What an amazing love. What an amazing God. What an amazing shepherd. You guys have a great day. God bless you. I'll catch up with you next time. You carry me close to your heart and show.